Hello everyone, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of plotting tutorials using Matplotlib in Python. Now in this tutorial we will be looking at stream plots. Now stream plots or streamline plots are useful to look at the velocities or flows around, uh, around objects. Let's say if you have some kind of uh, 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 wind, uh, wind speeds in the atmosphere or in the air or some current velocities and velocities of the waves in uh, in ocean surface or lake surface or something like that and you want to see how they are and you want to plot them up these kind of cases uh, your stream plots are very helpful just for instance take this example where we have an object over here and water is actually water or air is actually flowing through it flowing around it and the uh, stream plots help us to capture the flow properly and you can also use this one and at the same time there's an uh, there, if you have some differential equations like this like this one which is actually a, a van der Poel oscillator split van der Poel oscillator equation which is in one line split into two equations like this two equations like this the right hand side left hand side actually looks like uh, velocities velocities and the right hand side actually gives us the magnitude of the velocities if you have uh, equations like these you can actually plot them up in a particular region to see how the velocity or the flow of this with differentially of this domain looks like okay so that's what we're going to do in these kind of cases the streamline plots are very useful and that's what we're going to do today first what we're going to do first what we're going to do is this we're going to be a take on to take this van der Poel oscillator equi differential equations and then we're going to plot them today first First of all, let's actually start with uh, NumPy and Matplotlib. We imported them. Now let's actually write um, the e the function for to calculate the velocities. the The function let I let me call it as van van der and van der Poel oscillator like this. It is going to take three arguments m, x, and y, and then uh, it will calculate u and v velocities from each as per this equation, which is consist which is exactly the same equation as we used over here, and then we return the values u and v. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these values. I'm going to copy these values and paste these values for the half length. So I'm just going to do this in the box. And I'm going to do this in the box having half the length. Okay. Half the length whose half length is 8 units. And the number of points in along the x and y direction are like 101. So I'm going to make the square box. And the parameter mu I'm going to keep it as 0.5. You can keep it any value for that. That doesn't matter. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, cop. I'm just going to uh, find the x1 and y, x1 and x2. These two are the distances, uh, distance points along x and y directions. And usually this is sufficient. But to calculate velocities at each and every point, the we don't we, uh, more than this. We need actually the grid. Uh, we can actually we need this grid velocities. For that we need the grid uh, mesh fields or uh, mesh fields. So the x1 and x1, x1 and x2 uh, after using mesh grid will give me the velocity and give me the uh, rotations the x1 and x2 values the coordinate values at each and every point okay so that's the advantage of this and finally once you have done that you can actually calculate the velocities and the velocities are fairly simple okay if i put u comma v equals van der Poel oscillator function and pass in the arguments that arguments that's it this will calculate the uh, mean velocity. This will calculate the velocities for me, you know, u and v. And from these velocities, I can actually square them up, add them, and take the result. Right, take the square root of them, took square root of the sum, and this will give me the resultant velocity. Perfect. And now what I'm going to do is uh, after after doing this, let's actually calculate uh, this particular variable over here, l w. This is actually the line width parameter. We'll talk about this as we go along with the plot. And now this all of this which we looked at so far is just the housekeeping stuff and here comes the actual plot. First let's actually draw the plt dot figure. So let's put plt dot plt dot figure. Let them be let them be as it is. And now let's actually talk about the stream plot. So the syntax for the stream plot is as follows. It takes four compulsory or mandatory arguments, namely x, y, u and v, and it takes multiple uh, uh, multiple optional arguments. X and Y represents the distance notations, distances, distance positions in the X and Y axis. U and V represents the velocities, X and Y velocities, X direction and Y direction velocities. Density represents the number of streamline that you'd like to plot in a particular small region within the, within the overall plot. 
line which specifies the width of the velocity width of these lines width of these streamlines color represents the color uh, re re signifies the color of these lines using c map you can actually specify uh, different colors from a star from one particular color to another de depending upon the ma um, streamline magnitude you can actually set the norm value and make uh, make the overall plot um, how do i put you can actually set this norm value to be true and uh, normalize the streamlines between the 0 and 1 near 0 and 1 or minus 1 to 1 whichever way it is and then you can actually use this arrow size to increase the size of the arrows you arrow style to change the arrow, uh, arrow style and use min length to set specify with the minimum length uh, of magnitude for which velocity has to be captured these two are uh, mand uh, optional and the last one over here is actually the start points if you pass an array over here uh, array on the right hand side instead of none this will create stream pl stream and plots a uh, passing through or originating from the from these start points okay the enough of the introduction actually let's take an actual example and this will actually be may make more sense so let me copy and paste this like paste this over here so this is the example i've chosen i'm, I'm uh, plotting x1 and x2 and then a plt dot show plt dot show so first let me comment out this particular line let me uncomment this line let that be let me uncomment let me comment out this line now if i run this overall plot check this out the x1 and x2 corresponds to the direct dimensions x and along x and y directions so not a not a big deal u and v specify the u, uh, vel velocities in the u di i mean the x direction and in the y direction arrow size def si defines the size of these arrows by default the arrow size is one if we increase it to two the arrow size becomes a little bigger the arrow style over here specifies how what should be the arrow how should be the arrow look like but uh, here i define the arrow to be like this so that uh, it's open at, uh, it's, it has a sharp apex and it's, uh, it's not it's not close at the right back end so it's kind of like a proper arrow so if i put a line over here you put a uh, there's a, there's another symbol uh, if you put that it will be a closed arrow closed dead arrow you can like a triangular arrow you can use that and the density defines the number of lines you have to plot over here streamlines you have to plot so if i put the density to be two let's say you you can clearly notice that the streamlines would be twice the number or more than that slightly more than that we mostly twice the number than what it was actually is so for the, the for this plot uh, density one would be one is more than good my opinion so this will be a, let, let this be as it is and uh, in some times you might have to increase or decrease the density along x and y directions exclusively so you specify the x uh, uh, specify the x direction density and y direction density as a two value array and that thereby you can actually control uh, here the uh, the number of uh, the number of streamlines along the x axis are actually smaller whereas the density of the x uh, streamlines along the y axis are actually slightly larger i can actually control them by this way and uh, added to that there's this line width option there's this line width option this line width will make sure that the line is actually a little more thicker streamlines are a little more thicker so now they are now they are thick if i put this to three it will be even more thicker watch just watch put this to three this will be even more thicker so i'm going to resolve uh, i mean put it to one because for this plot again as again this looks better this looks okay um okay let this be uh, just the uh, illustrative figure right not a problem and as now let's actually look at colors okay there's another option there's another option called as line width with uh, with the value such as this so instead of passing a single constant line width if you pass a variable uh, value like lw over here which is going to vary between 0 and 4 units okay the line width will change between 0 and 4 units where the va velocity ma uh, overall magnitude of velocity is higher okay uh, higher uh, there the velo there the line width are going to be thicker and wherever the velocities are smaller the their line widths are going to be thinner thinner like this this will help you to get the magnitude field magnitude field now this is just by using the thickness of the lines you can actually do a little bit more tweak and make it uh, okay you can actually do a little bit more tweak by adding up uh, multiple colors so instead of just using a single color over here 
you can use the velocity well uh, resultant velocity and and uh, and actually define you can use the resultant velocity and define a car and and put a color map uh, to specify your own uh, well uh, I mean uh, streamline colors so now if you click now if you click over here wherever the velocities are higher overall velocities velocity of magnitude resultant magnitude velocity is higher those will be in red color and those uh, which are actually lighter the I mean, velocities are smaller those will be at a uh, at the violet color so this is actually the color map we use this color map is actually the rainbow color map we call as jet we wanted if you want this uh, red white blue color map you can use seismic okay this will give me a red white co blue color map like this one you can use different color maps of your choice i'll talk about i'll talk about this explicitly in one in one of the future future videos now if i just re re remove this line with option you just have constant lines all over and you can use the colors to actually differentiate the streamlines so the, i mean the magnitude of the streamlines okay but if you're using colors uh, one option that you'll actually that you can actually go about is go about this instead of just writing stream line stream plot as it is like you can actually create a variable like you can get a uh, you can you can actually get uh, an object like this you can get a, a handle like this i mean for the plot like stream and then there is a you can use a color bar option to actually plot, plot the colors so to make this plot complete i'm just going to add up out of the title out of the title so this is actually streams so the title is a uh, van der pole face portrait and the x label i can actually put the x direction and for the y label i can put y direction like this and in the i'm using this color bar option over here and inside that i'm passing stream dot lines so if i do that it will get a color bar and the line colors correspond to these lines will be plotted separately in a, in a spot in a legend and we have the x takes y takes and we set the axis and we have a grid and we show the entire figure and now we run this now this stream plot is perfect the stream plot is complete now if i were to uh, expand this and see see it for myself wherever the lines are wide you can clearly see it's between somewhere between 30 to I mean 42 to 45 or something wherever the magnets are larger that is in red color wherever the magnets are smallest it's actually in blue color so instead of this uh, seismic, if I were to put some other uh, color like um, jet that we saw earlier, the, the figure will remain the same, only the color pattern will change. Nevertheless, it looks beautiful, it looks beautiful and you can actually do a lot more things with that. And uh, just by increasing the, putting the line width also into the figure, you can give a little more emphasis and uh, you can use them as per your convenience. Either use the line width to specify the differences in velocities I use the color maps or you can actually use them both in a smart way now that's all i have for you all in this stream plot i hope you hope you all found this interesting and uh, uh very good very good to follow and i hope i would have cleared you all all the points uh, all the doubts you have yeah uh, if, if you want to get a slightly more uh, edged version you can actually get uh, you can uh, figure out the start underscore points and we if we use the if you pass an array for start underscore points and if they didn't throw any error it will only it will create streamlines passing through those points or uh, streamlines join starting from those points okay it will generate that and that way you have an uh, actual control as to where you're actually doing the streamlines then so that will give you what you call as trajectories so if you put st if you put start points over here instead of you will get not only streamlines you'll also get trajectories and that is actually pretty cool that's actually a little bit cool in the cool in that matter so that's all i have for you all in this video thank you for watching and i'll see you all next time in another interesting video and in the next video i will be talking about uh plots the complement of this so till then take care